This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com, and today I'm doing an interview with one of the United Wrestling Network stars. She's also appeared on Impact Wrestling, AEW. She's wrestled all over the place, and we're going to get into it today. Heather Monroe, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about yourself? Good. I'm guessing you're still in warm Los Angeles, right? Yes. Uh, it's it got cold here for like a few days, but um, that was like in the sixties, like lower sixties is cold for yeah. here. <laughs> I hope I could live in a place like that one day because we're already in the negatives here in Canada. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm from Iowa originally. So I've lived that. And I remember distinctly a day in college, I was walking to class in a ton of snow and I said, I never want to do this ever again. <laughs> I've been to Iowa a bunch of times for the National Wrestling Hall of Fame there with George Tregos and Luthez. Uh, what was it like growing up in Iowa? That's a big amateur wrestling state. Yeah, it was. Uh, I love Iowa. I'm very proud to be from Iowa. Um, and it was it was kind of just a usual, typical upbringing. But yeah, lots of amateur wrestling was huge there. It was that was the big thing at my high school. Um, and obviously I went to University of Iowa where it's a huge thing there as well. And did you ever amateur wrestle or I don't know if girls amateur wrestling is that big in high school athletics there yet? Um, I There was a couple of girls when I was uh, in high school, but it was never something I was going to do because I was more into like theater and show choir. Um, even though I watched professional wrestling at the time, it never like occurred to me to do amateur wrestling. Um, but yeah, it, there was definitely a couple girls and I think it's getting a lot bigger at the amateur level for, uh, women in high school to be doing it. When did you start watching professional wrestling and who introduced it to you? Um, I started watching it in the fifth grade. I was 11. Um, and there was a couple of kids in my class that watched it. Um, and I had started watching tough enough and there was the first season like with Maven and I started watching Tough Enough and then Heat would be on right after. So I started watching it that way. And then the couple of uh, kids that also watched it, we kind of started hanging out and doing pay-per-view parties at, at each other's houses and, you know, trampoline wrestling and that kind of stuff. So um, I've been watching it for quite a while off and on uh, since then. Was there any uh, favorite character you had growing up? I was Lita. Every time that we trampoline wrestled, she was my girl. Um, her and the Hardy Boys were definitely my my go tos, and um, like Trish Stratus, I loved as well when I was younger. At what point in time did you start thinking about that you might want to become a professional wrestler? Because you already mentioned acting, and I watched another interview with you earlier today where you said uh, you wanted to get into acting for a long time. Yeah, I, I actually moved out here to act. Uh, so I did I decided to actually wrestle in 2014. I was kind of at the end of my rope with trying to act and audition and everything out here because it's just it just wasn't my scene. Like I'm just not into the auditioning and all of that. It was really hard on me. So um, I was like, well. I've always wanted to do this and I was watching Total Divas at the time um, and it kind of inspired me to finally go after it and finally actually take the leap to become a professional wrestler and it was the best decision I ever made. It was exactly where I needed to be and what I needed to be doing because I ended up being more acting gigs from being a wrestler than from when I was actually auditioning. <laughs> Yeah, I've had some horrible audition experiences where I've driven five hours for like 30 seconds and then you got to drive back. What's one of your worst audition experiences that you've been through? Oh, man. Um, I auditioned for just like nothing like crazy weird, but just um, auditioning for like commercials. Like they don't really have scripts every time. So you have to like, you just like talking about your personality and stuff and it's it's kind of weird. And then you get into the room and you're with a bunch of people that look like you or people that look nothing like you. And then you're like, wait, am I in the right place? Like, is this what they want? And it, it's, it was just like, it was such a mind F and like, 
same I mean wrestling kind of is too but in a different way that I think I can handle a little bit better I guess and I'm a little bit older too so that helps as far as acting where what would your strong point be in acting would it be uh, dramatic or are you funny what what where would you specialize in <laughs> um I guess I I mean I wanted to do it all really but comedy has always been my favorite thing. I did a lot of improv when I first first moved out here. So I I went through uh, Upright Citizens Upright Citizens Brigade. Wow, I can speak today. Um, and I did all their levels. I interned for them. I I was doing their advanced courses and doing a bunch of improv. Um, so I really loved doing that kind of stuff. And uh, comedy acting was always my favorite. We're gonna mix in a few fan questions here. I never heard that you trained with Lance Storm, but Charles here says he's curious on Lance Storm's training and methods and how it applies to working with different independent companies. He appreciates the style uh, and he doesn't see you ever calling spots. <laughs> uh, I, I was not trained at Lance Storm's uh, with Lance Storm, unfortunately, that would have been great, but I was trained at Santino Bros, uh, which I love that atmosphere and um, I would never have wanted to go to a different school than Santino Rose. They became my family and, and just the way that they train, like Joey Chaos is such a motivational person and he he really cares about us there. So um, that training experience for me was awesome. And we really just learned how to get in the ring and, and go. So um, it was less about really calling stuff beforehand and more about being in the moment, which again, kind of goes hand in hand with my improv experience. But Maybe you're getting me confused with Taya, who is my best friend and did train at Lance Storm. And there is a match on this channel that uh, PCW let me post between you and Taya that I put uh, in the description of this video for anyone that wants to watch you in action. That's actually when I met you in person mm -hmm. a few years ago. Uh, but you've, you've accomplished a lot since then. But before we move on from your training, could you tell us a little bit about what your wrestling training was like? Yeah, so I went in in 2014, and um, I was in in a class with about I think it was the biggest class that they had had at the time, and then uh, they ended up getting more later. But I think we had 26, 28, uh, maybe it was a little bit less. But um, and we kind of just learned the ropes, and we were doing a lot of calisthenics in the beginning. Like, didn't even get in the ring for the first couple of trainings. Um, and didn't even learn how to do like a lot of the bumps and like that kind of stuff until later on. Um, but at the end of it, it was just me and one other guy, literally guy cool um, at the end of it. And that was a, a year that I trained and then uh, finally got to have my debut. Now, were they roughing you up at all in the ring or were they taking it pretty easy on you when you were training? No, that's actually the thing that I have always appreciated about being from Santino's. Um, they are very big on respect and very, very big on treating the women just the same as everybody else there because pretty much the theory is if I'm not getting hit the same way the guys are in the ring and then I wrestle somebody that will hit me just as hard, that kind of does a disservice to me because then I don't know what to do with myself. And so we... It's it's not that we got roughed up, but I was definitely treated the same as the guys and um, expected to do the exact same things as, as the guys. And I think it made me a better wrestler and it made me um, kind of uh, just a better, a better wrestler. And I'm able to like handle more in the ring, I think, than um, I would have been if they would have, you know, had little, little baby hands on me. I've done a few interviews with Viva Van, also known as Victoria Vaughn, who's also from that school. Did you have any crossover interactions with her or was it different times that you guys were training? Yeah, so I actually um, helped with training. Um, I was a couple of years in when I started doing that, just kind of a trainer's assistant, you know, just being there to be kind of a dummy for them to try stuff on. But um, Victoria was one of my first classes that I actually helped uh, train. So, and I, I think her class had about four girls in it, which is pretty rare to have that many girls in a class. Uh, so I kind of, um, became the mom of, of all the Santino, uh, women outside of obviously, um, Jezebel, Sylvia being the, the Santino mom in general, but I kind of 
took those girls under my wing and I, I really wanted to help give them um, a little more insight on being a woman in the business and um, just help them get places as, as much as I could um, and kind of be that where I, I didn't really have that when I was first starting. And so I wanted to be like kind of there for those girls. Blimp and Dom company wants to know if you still wrestle for Hurricane Pro. Yeah, I'm their women's champ still. I unfortunately was unable to make it to the last show because um, I did come in contact with somebody that had COVID. So I just wanted to be safe. Uh, I took a couple of negative tests since then, but didn't want to come just in case. And then um, I will be there hopefully in January. I know that the Santino's brother's school, I guess it's closed. Hopefully that's just temporary due to COVID. Uh, UWN is on a hiatus due to the restrictions now in LA. PCW hasn't run since last January due to all this, sadly. Um, how has this whole COVID situation affected your bookings overall? I mean, I think it. myself and everybody else got hit pretty hard from it. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on, especially in the very beginning of when everything was happening, like April, May, I had a lot of big things happening um, that unfortunately I wasn't able to do. Um, but I do think I was fortunate enough uh, to still be working uh, through kind of, I think I started again in July-ish, maybe September, but um, yeah, to, to be able to actually continue to work and, and do things and go to different places and be flown places still um, made me feel really good. And I was just trying to keep my momentum that I had uh, going before everything uh ended because of COVID, but um, it definitely, I'm not doing three or four bookings a week anymore. It's more uh, maybe two, if I'm lucky, a month. Uh, so that's been a big, a big change for me. I kind of don't know what to do with myself sometimes because um, I like being busy, but um, I was lucky enough to go out to Texas for a few things, uh, Hurricane Pro included, Sabotage um, and uh, Heavy Metal. So that was fun. And then obviously doing AEW um, and then, uh, with prime time and with championship wrestling from Hollywood running out here, I kind of kept as busy as I could. I heard in one of your interviews that your goal was to wrestle full time. It seemed like you may have been there, but now of course it might be a bit hard, but would you consider yourself a full time wrestler now? Well, definitely now I feel like it because um, I did have a, a job that I lost in April so I've kind of been fully relying on wrestling outside of, you know, like getting unemployment and stuff that can help me there. Um, but other than that, like having my Patreon and having my merch store, um, as well as any bookings that I can get has definitely helped keep me afloat. Um, and yeah, I guess I kind of weirdly achieved that goal in the end. <laughs> well, now that you bring it up, you want to give uh, your t-shirt store and Patreon a plug where fans can look it up? Yeah, just uh, Heather Monroe on Patreon. And then um, it's heathermonroe.bigcartel.com. I have a bunch of new 8x10s that I just put up. I have t-shirts and a few more pins left. So I'm sending stuff out. I just went on a run today. So if you wanted to get anything by Christmas, I, I'm still going to send some stuff out. So. Now, speaking of uh, wrestling in Texas, I was out in Texas last weekend covering the SWE Fury show where Jazz is in charge of their women's division. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a show that airs uh, on the CW network and some other networks. Have you had any talks about coming to SWE Fury? No, not yet. Um, but I have seen uh, a few of my Texas wrestling friends uh, doing the show and it looks like it's a nice production and they're doing uh, a lot of good stuff there. There's a fan on here. We have a company, Great North Wrestling, here in Canada. And Josh is asking if you'd ever come up here and wrestle for us. Right now, the border's <laughs> locked down, but we are going to have a priority on our women's division uh, when we uh, are able to promote again. But have you wrestled here in Canada? And would you wrestle up here? I, so I, I wrestled up in Canada for a tour that I did with the band Pussifer and we had a Lucha Libre opening act. So in that regard, I have wrestled there, but I haven't actually worked any uh, indie companies up in Canada yet. Um, 
And I would love to do that. That's like definitely one of the places I want to go. There's a lot of great wrestling up there, a lot of great wrestlers that I haven't gotten the chance to to go against. So definitely would uh, would be looking forward to that once anybody wants Americans in their country again. Yeah, you guys are more friendly. You'll let us in if we fly, but we've banned you. Come on in. <laughs> yeah, come on in, everybody. We don't care here, apparently. <laughs> There's actually some that snuck in here a few months ago saying they were going to drive to Alaska, but they actually ended up having a holiday and it actually made national news like it was the worst thing anyone could ever do. I think I read about that and I was like, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> yeah, pretty slow news day with that, like is front page news all over the country. Right. Uh, Josh wants to know what female superhero would you want to play if you had the choice? Oh my gosh. I'm like on a major superhero kick again. It's like coming back around from the beginning of quarantine. Um, I, I dig Black Widow. I think she's a badass. So, I mean, is she technically a superhero? I guess, yes. But um, yeah, I think Black Widow would be my choice. Our champion up here in Great North Wrestling is Lufisto. Have you ever worked with her? I haven't worked with her in a match. I've I've been on shows with her, um, like when I did Shimmer and Rise. So um, she's kind of given me feedback, but I've never gotten the chance to actually work with her. She'd definitely be someone I would want to work with. You were one of the mainstays of bar wrestling that, of course, Joey Ryan ran. It seemed like... You had a good relationship with him overall. Um, what do you make of the the seventeen or so allegations and all the all the stuff that went on that I guess caused bar wrestling to close? And there's legal stuff going on now um, with Joey trying to sue a bunch of them. Yeah, I uh, yeah I did have a close relationship with Joey. It's uh, it's hard to when somebody that actually like helped me so, so much in the business, you find out is a completely different person that you don't really, I had no idea that a lot of that was going on. And um, a lot of the girls are my friends too. So it was really hard to hear uh, on both ends that they had had to deal with something so hard and that I'm sure hurt them more than just, you know, like in the business it hurt them and personal life and internally it hurt them. So I, it was just really hard to hear that because um, a lot of those girls were my friends and Joey had helped me a lot in my career. I owed him a lot from, you know, how much he did put me on bar and, and give me a platform, but I, no one wants to, like, I can never ever uh, be even cordial with him anymore after something like that. Daniel Smith says, hi, Heather. Please, uh, could I get a shout out? And have you ever wrestled in the UK? What do you think of the AEW brand where you have wrestled? Well, hello, Daniel. Um, I have wrestled again in the UK. I did wrestle um, with the band, um, but I haven't wrestled uh, for any independent promotions. I went over um, with Taya and managed for her at some point, um, which was really fun. But um, I would love to do that. There's so many places on my bucket list that I really want to wrestle, especially in different countries. Cause I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to wrestle in a lot of places in America and I've wrestled in Mexico. Um, but I would really love to hit Canada and England and Ireland and um, Germany, like Japan, obviously. Um, there's a lot of great places that I haven't uh, hit yet. So I'd love to do that. But um, as far as AEW goes, I, um, I really, really enjoyed um, my time when I was there. And I think there's a lot of uh, great girls with a lot of talent that um, need an opportunity to shine there. Were those matches for Dark? What was that? I'm sorry. Were those matches for the AEW Dark TV show? Yeah. So I did a match on Dynamite uh, with Sheeta, and then I had a Dark match with Penelope. Now, was that you applying to them and them bringing you in or were were they reaching out to you? How did that whole process go? Um, yeah, I, I was trying to see because I was so bored at home. Like this was before I actually started getting back into bookings again because it was in August, I believe. 
And so I um, kind of reached out and I said, hey, would you guys want to have me there? And kind of got it set up and then went and trained with them because um, Dustin Rhodes runs a training beforehand and Medusa was there, which was really awesome. Um, so I kind of got to train with both of them and learn from them um, and then uh, got, you know, ended up on Dynamite and Dark. Were you dealing with Christopher Daniels there or was there someone else that was uh, working on like who you would have to apply to, to get, to get in? Um, right now it was QT Marshall. He was the one in charge of that. Interesting. Uh, I guess what was the feedback from that? Was it positive feedback? Uh, any chance you think that they're going to bring you back? Um, I hope so. They they definitely gave me uh, good feedback after the Dynamite match, especially. Um, I felt really confident about it, and uh, I think that they liked that they could throw me into that kind of position, and I was able to handle it. Um, and they were they were kind of giving me a couple of of different things. Um, and yeah, I, I would hope I would come back. There's um, they is so much opportunity there for independent wrestlers, especially right now. So. Um, never say never. Juan wants to know if you have a dream opponent. This one's so hard because I think, I mean, I would say Lita is like my ultimate dream opponent. If I could wrestle anyone at all, would love, love, love to wrestle her. Um, I'd love to wrestle Medusa too. That would be really sick. Um, and then like currently people that are wrestling, um, I would, I really, really, really want to get a chance to wrestle uh, Serena Deeb. I think she's amazing. She was always somebody that I watched um, in Shimmer when I was watching that. And um, yeah, she's like number one on my list right now. And as far as United Wrestling Network, who we're doing this interview for, could you tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about how you became involved with them, what your role is there, and a little bit about your character and, and gimmick in that company? Yeah. Um, so Championship Wrestling Room Hollywood, I started with, I don't even remember, probably like two or three. And it's been more than two years, I'm pretty sure. Like three years ago, um, they had decided to bring back um, their women's division, uh, which they hadn't had for a few years. So um, I, I actually started, I think I first had my matches with them like when I first started, but it was, it was kind of nothing. Um, and then when I came back, back I was a little bit more confident in myself I kind of had a full character that they could already present um so I got to kind of uh do my Heather Monroe thing which is you know very rich girl um kind of sassy I think I'm better than everybody uh I, I also like to say that I'm a bad feminist uh when I'm a heel because I'm I act like I'm for everybody all the women to be lifted up but I'm really just about myself um but yeah, so I got to do that. And then we, I finally got to have a manager, which was, I had been saying for the longest time that I wanted Halston to be my manager. And they finally kind of gave it to me. And I think realized why I wanted it so bad. Cause I feel like me and Halston bounce off each other really well. Um, I feel like my character gained something from having a manager. Um, and just over the past couple of years, I've been able to grow as a performer, as a wrestler um, under their umbrella. and. Um, learn a little bit more about what it's like to be doing TV wrestling. I guess as far as when they're going to return, that all has to do with whatever the government regulations are there in LA. You have no uh, knowledge about that? Yeah, so it's kind of weird right now because I think that they had stopped doing primetime just as a precaution because a lot of people are getting COVID right now. It's um, It's been really bad across the entire country um the stay-at-home order actually doesn't shut down studios i don't believe so um i'm hoping uh, in january and i'm sure they are too that we'll be able to get back up and running with uh, like prime time and then uh i do believe we will be doing tapings for uh, championship wrestling from hollywood in january as well uh we actually finished up with an entire december tapings um last month so that's all in the bag uh just gotta hopefully get the next round up and going when they do those championship wrestling from Hollywood tapings, I know they're block tapings and like mm -hmm. they air in syndication all over the place, including Arizona. Um, how many days does that usually last? We do everything over two days. So it's, it's 
especially this last time, it was a long days because we were filming for two whole months, pretty much. Um, but it's it's kind of it's like worth it because then you kind of get it all done. You're in the moment. You're in character. But then there's those days where you have a couple matches and you're just exhausted from them. Johnny Bravo asks, when are you coming to Arizona? I don't think there's anything running there right now because they're just as strict as LA. Yeah, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much happening there right now. So we'll see. Hopefully in the future, I'll be back. So. Now, you also wrestled for Impact. Could you tell us about your experience with them? I know uh, it wasn't this year or anything, but people remember it. <laughs> yeah, I did it a, a couple of years ago, actually. Um, and I got to wrestle uh, Allie and, and Sue Young. So it was kind of a thing where I was kind of getting an opportunity to show what I was capable of. And um, getting to work with those girls was super helpful. And getting to work with Gail Kim, who was the, um, the agent for the women, uh, she just she helped me so much in like the little littlest things that she would say to me so I got some really really good feedback that I think um, I was able to translate into my wrestling really well and it, I think it elevated me more than anything um, during that time so I was really glad to be able to work with them and um, the locker room is great there everybody's cool I had friends already there so it was nice um, to kind of be there and be in that um, environment but yeah it was a really good experience I'm hoping to potentially go back there as well. <laughs> the RMM1976 asks if you have a YouTube channel. No, I don't. I, I like have a couple of highlight videos up under Heather Monroe, but I really don't do anything to um, like new content much, just highlight videos, unfortunately. Juan, or sorry, Juan wants to know your favorite cheat meal. Oh, I really love pizza. I, every time after a show or after a long weekend, I want pizza so bad. So definitely my, my favorite cheat meal, um, that, and I would say like fat burger, which is so good. They have impossible burgers there. And, um, I eat that with their fat fries and a shake. So good. Dr. Smith X says you eat sweet, glorious bacon. I don't. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat bacon. I eat tempeh bacon sometimes, some seitan. How long have you been a vegetarian and what made you become one? Ooh, how long ago was that? It's been, it's been four years. Yeah, four years, maybe five. Four or five years, I've been a, I've been a vegetarian. I eat fish still, so I'm technically a pescatarian. Um, but yeah, I I was eating too much fast food. Like I would literally every time after training, I'd be at the Carl's Jr. getting a burger and fries, and I just was eating McDonald's all the time and like so 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 much fast food. So I was like, you know what? I'll stop eating meat, and then that'll help me stop stop going to fast food joints. And it really helped. And now everywhere serves vegetarian options. So I'm trying really hard. I've, I've been better because I think I got the fast food out of my system and I've just been, been good about only going uh, a couple of times, but it's now it's getting harder because they're actually putting veggie burgers and vegetarian options on the menu. <laughs> yes, I have noticed that. Have you been feeling better since you cut out meat? Because you hear that sometimes about uh, people that become vegetarian you know it didn't really make much of a difference in terms of my like how I felt or anything I definitely felt better because I wasn't overloading on fast food um so that helped but um I also went through the phase at the beginning of becoming a vegetarian that I think a lot of people go through which is only eating pasta or fake meats and that's also not that good for you um a lot of it at least. So um, I kind of had to curb that as well and learn how to make uh, some better vegetarian dishes than pasta and uh, fake chicken nuggets. But um, otherwise, I, I kind of felt the same. 
Carl wants to know if you would ever work for Pro Wrestling Magic in New Jersey. And there was another guy asking earlier if you'd wrestle, if you have wrestled much in the Northeast. Um, I I would love to wrestle everywhere and anywhere. I don't really have um, any qualms about that. Um, so definitely would love to wrestle uh, more on the East Coast. Um, and yeah, I haven't really uh, gotten the chance to wrestle much in the Northeast. Um, I would love to do that. There's obviously a lot of really awesome promotions up there. Um, and just just looking for when things are open again and more people are willing to bring people from out of state in. <laughs> Yeah, I know New York is fully closed now for, for wrestling. They're a commissioned state, so you can't run anything up there. Uh, uh, Doofenson Jackson says he saw you live with Killer Cross, who, of course, is now carrying Cross at Maverick Pro Wrestling mm -hmm. in North Hollywood. You were super badass with Priscilla Kelly. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a really fun match. I believe it was me and... Uh, me versus Priscilla versus Cat, uh, and that was a really fun match. I really like working with uh, uh, Priscilla, and I like working for Maverick when they were around. So hopefully, uh, once things are up and running here again, they'll be running as well. And what is your opinion on uh, Killer Cross? Because he's uh, he was getting a big push, and then unfortunately he had that injury. But I met him in PCW Ultra, and I was really impressed with him. I think he might be the mm -hmm. best. Uh, young WWE uh, new talent in there right now. Yeah, I, I, he's such a good dude too. Um, he's a friend of mine. Uh, haven't seen him for a while, obviously, but um, he was always just really um, cool. And like, he would always help everybody out. I remember when I was doing FSW and he um, helped out a lot there and he would always be giving feedback to people. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm glad to see the good ones getting up there, but Unfortunately, the injuries take him out, and uh, hopefully he'll recover quickly from that. Have you ever had any WWE tryouts or extra jobs yet? Um, I've done extra work a bunch, yeah. it's. Uh, I actually did a squash match with Nia Jax like, when I first started. I don't even remember what year it was. Probably 2016, but um, so I've done, I've done a bunch of extra work for them, yeah. What was your best experience uh, when you were doing extra work? My best experience? Um, I guess that, that, that match with, with Nia Jax, it was really awesome to wrestle in the Staples Center live on and Raw with a bunch of people uh, that actually knew who I was, which, which was nice because I could literally, I was walking down the ramp like before, you know, during the commercial, and I'd hear, Heather, oh, Heather, yeah, Heather. So that kind of made me feel um, good. And it was just awesome to be like, kind of see what it would be like to actually be a part of it. Plus you get the rush from the crowd in the Staples Center, I'm sure, which the fans might not know, but it's pretty cool to experience that. Even when you're taking the bumps, uh, the fan mm -hmm. reaction when there's that many people. Yeah. Yeah. It was really awesome. And like I said, there, it felt like there was a bunch of, Southern California fans there. So they, uh, they were cheering me on. It felt good. Charles wants to know if you could recommend a couple of your matches that are on YouTube that people could check out. And he says, thank you for your time. Oh yes. I, there's actually a good amount on YouTube um, that you can watch. Uh, the Hurricane Pro shows are up um, through Title Match Network. I have a lot through Title Match Network too. Um, up on there, um, I really, really love a um, match that I had right before everything and like ended back in the beginning of 2020. Um, me versus Roxy, which was for Ladies Night Nine, I want to say, but it's on Title Match Network. Um, and then I recently had uh, matches with Amber Nova and Ty Valkyrie at Hurricane Pro um, that you can also find through um, through Title Match Network and. Then uh, Championship Wrestling has their uh, shows fully on YouTube um, through, I want to say, I can't remember the actual name of it, but it's, let me actually look it up right now so I can tell you because it's like the Memphis Syndicate and they post it all on their YouTube. So you can watch full uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood um, shows, which is nice. 
I'm going to look that up for now. And while you're looking that up, I've done, I think, three or four Amber Nova interviews, and she did a cinematic match for this channel. So the fans here know her very well, and there's a lot of Amber Nova fans on here. So maybe you could talk about what was it like being in the ring with her and what you think of her, because I think she has a lot of potential. Yeah, okay, so the it's just championship wrestling. If you look at Heather Monroe versus, it, it'll come up as some of their featured matches. That's for Hollywood. Um, but as far as Amber Nova goes, yeah, it was really, uh, I had a really fun time working with her. I had met her a couple times before um, when she had worked for Hurricane Pro previously, um, but we hadn't, this was our first time wrestling. So um, it was really fun to work with her. She's just a really nice, genuine human being. So being around her is easy as well. Um, and then uh, we had a really competitive match that I thought was really fun that you can uh, watch on YouTube through Title Match Network. Wing Chung Empire asks, what was it like wrestling Jazz, who I've become friends with in recent months? That was so much fun. It was one of those things where it was like, oh my God, I'm wrestling one of my, like the people that I used to watch growing up, like somebody that I would idolized and just thought was like this, in, she was so intimidating, like, you know, watching as a kid, I was like, oh my God, she's going to beat me up. Um, and she still like has that intimidating presence. Um, and I, it was, I was intimidated to work with her, um, but she definitely, um, she definitely was so cool and the match was so easy and I really, really had a good time. I would love to uh, work with her again because we were kind of limited on time because it was for Championship Wrestling Hollywood um, through NWA. So um, we only got, we didn't get too much time, uh, but I feel like if we had more time, we could have a really, really, really good match. Jackalo Music, um, he says it's for us both, but I'll leave it to you to answer this. <laughs> CM Punk says he's return, he would return given the right conditions. Do you have any interest in seeing CM Punk return to either WWE or AEW? I mean, if he wants to come back, I don't see why not. He he left certainly at the height of his game, game so um, I don't see why not why they couldn't bring him back in, in some capacity if he really wanted to be a part of it again. Daniel Smith says, "Thank you, Heather. What was it like wrestling with Penelope Ford and Sheeta?" That was a really good experience. I I enjoyed working with both of them. I had never cheated before. Um, and it was it was a fun experience and I got to uh, kind of show what I was capable of there. And uh, me and Penelope had known each other um, previously from other indie shows and we had uh, done a couple matches together prior. So um, we kind of knew each other. It wasn't much of a feeling out process like it was with Sheeta. So um, it was a good time and I, I just loved Penelope so much. Hugh wants to know, what was it like teaming with Ariel Monroe? <laughs> Hard work? <laughs> uh, that was really fun. Um, we, we didn't even really know each other when we uh, met. We just had the same last names at the time. So um, we were the Monroe sisters. Uh, but we had a lot of fun. She She's down with the goofy stuff just like I am. Uh, we came out to Sister Sister for our entrance. It was a lot of fun. Um, we kind of just got to play around a little bit and uh, yeah, it was a good time. I really like her. Sister, sister, the TV show. Or is there another? Song? Yeah, we, we came up to sister, sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. They, that, I thought it was hilarious. Are... <laughs> <laughs> she let, she was... let me do it. And I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Matt R, one of our great members here at the Hannibal TV wants to know how is it working with Nia Jackson, the ring? I, like I said, that was a really good experience overall for me, um, just kind of getting to see how it all worked, especially because I was very young in business when I did, I was maybe a year in. So um, it, I had a really good experience with her. Um, like I said, I got treated just the same in the ring as the guys when I was trading. So nothing can really phase me in terms of like, if someone hits harder, or like whatever, it's, it doesn't make a difference to me. Um, so I had, I had a really uh, good experience with her it seems almost some of that Nia Jax stuff is a work just to help get people talking about her and, and get her over to I, I suspect some of it could be that 
Poss very possible. You never know anymore. Oh, don't don't ask me about that. I won't. Ask, I don't know anything about it, so we'll skip that. Okay. Yeah, I don't uh, want to talk about my abusive ex on here. Thank you. Uh, there's a fan on here that says you're better than everybody. I guess this is he's talking about your uh, your wrestling character here. Yes. No, uh, me. I know, you've, I know you've done intergender matches. Uh, someone's asking on here, what's your opinion on intergender wrestling? Um, well, you know, with just training in general, most women have to do intergender wrestling from the start. So I trained with all guys, started with four girls at the beginning of the class, but those other girls dropped out pretty quickly. So I, I pretty much only trained with men um, when I was first starting. So um, I, I love intergender wrestling. I think it allows for more opportunities for women and men to, to wrestle different people, especially in a place like SoCal where there's so few women wrestlers. Um, it really gives uh, me personally and us other girls obviously in smaller areas a better opportunity to have different opponents so i'm not wrestling the same girl over and over and over again um and i just think there's there's just more creative juices that can come from that and then uh, more stories in turn there's a fan on here asking if you're on facebook maybe this would be a good time to let people know where they could find you on social media i technically have a facebook but i really don't go on it very often unless um, to check like if any promoters or um, any group chats have said anything of importance. Um, I, my, my, I mostly use Twitter and uh, Instagram, which you can follow me on. Both are Heather is me. As far as between WWE and AEW, there's been some fans asking this in the chat. Do you have a preference of which company you would rather work for? Not really. I'm just, like I said, uh, my goal is to just make a living wrestling and I'll be happy getting to wrestle anywhere and having a big platform like either of those would obviously help my career immensely and um, give me a better platform to do what I love. So I don't really have a preference of either of them. I think they both have different things to offer and I could offer them a bunch of stuff as well. War Eagle wants to know who is the best booker on the indie scene. <laughs> That's hard. I mean, I'm kind of biased because Santino Bros is my jam. Um, um, I, what I loved about them is that they do have like really good stories that they want to integrate in and have awesome wrestling at the same time. Um, so I really loved uh, when we were running shows regularly, like the, amazing stories that Eli would help uh, come up with and then Joey and booking. Um, I, I just think there's, there's a lot to be said for having like full storylines, which I don't think uh, uh, happens a lot in um, every indie, which is fine. Cause it can just be matches, but um, that's what I liked most about Santino's is they had full storylines that like you would see through for a whole year. Daniel wants to know the best highlight of your wrestling career. Oh man, there's been a few really cool opportunities I've gotten um, doing like just working for those major companies uh, has has been really cool. Wrestling jazz was probably one of the biggest things that I've uh, been able to do, and something that I I couldn't I couldn't believe that um, I was wrestling jazz. So definitely that, and then um, there was a bar wrestling. I th think. When I wrestled Jamie Senegal, it was one of the last ones, uh, uh, one of the last ones, period. Um, and Lee uh, was there and she watched my match and I was like, holy crap, that's insane. Uh, so that was really cool too. There's a fan on here that wants to know if you're single and if he needs to have at least a million in the bank to stand a chance with you. <laughs> At least a million. I mean, I've got expensive taste, babe. At least a million. <laughs> is it expensive to live out there in LA, as, as people say? Uh, yeah, t it is. Right now, it's gotten cheaper. <laughs> I just actually moved to a new apartment because stuff, it's like so much cheaper to rent out here right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty expensive 
expensive to live out here. It sucks that I really love living out here, to be honest. What's if I could live somewhere else, that's cheaper. What's, what was what that? do you like, what do you like most about living in LA? Um, I really like that there's so much to do <laughs> normally. Obviously not right now, but um, there's just so many things that you can do. So many fun, different uh, things that you can't really do in a lot of different places that are like, even like big other big cities. I think that LA has so much more to offer than other big cities too um, in that regard. And then it doesn't hurt that I have, there's like zero weather here. Like it rains sometimes, but like not really. And that's about uh, the extent of the weather out here. There's been some fans on here asking about your musical taste. <laughs> I have a very eclectic musical taste. Um, I definitely like like nostalgia stuff. So I listen to a lot of old um, like indie rock kind of stuff, like brand new and the used kind of emo stuff that I used to love in high school. Um, and then I really like... Um, like hip hop and 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 rap, so I like like Megan Thee Stallion. Like women rapping is like all that I listen to right now. <laughs> the city girl. I heard in uh, <laughs> in one of your interviews, you like to go out and party a little bit here and there. Me? Yes, I do. That's been honestly like it's. I don't like to go clubbing or anything like that, but I like to go to a bar with my friends and have a good time. Where would be your go to place in L.A.? Oh man. That's hard to say because I, I don't really have a go-to. But when when I was going out more and when uh, when my friend Jake Atlas was still here, we would go to uh, West Hollywood a lot. And there's um, a Barney's Beanery there that's like kind of a low-key bar that has games and stuff like that that um, I really enjoyed going to. What's been your worst traffic experience living there? Because <laughs> I've experienced it a few times. It can be pretty brutal. Yeah, um, you kind of just get used to it. Like I kind of, obviously when you move here, you know that you're gonna have to deal with it. So at first it'd be like, oh, I think I can get somewhere in 20 minutes. Just kidding, it's gonna take me an hour. Um, and then I had a couple of those where it had to be hit over the head with it. But um, <laughs> other than that, I, I'm pretty used to it. I, when I first moved out here, I was working, um, I lived in the Valley and I was working at a spa in the Palisades, which is completely on the other side. Um, so, I'd have to sit in traffic for like an hour and 20 minutes every day to get there. And so that was pretty miserable. But um, once I discovered podcasts, that definitely helped. Yeah, I find <laughs> that helps with driving too. Yeah, I like hardly listen to any anymore because I'm not driving as much. Jackalope Music wants to know if there's any vegetarian dietary supplements you would recommend and your thoughts on protein powder. I don't really do much supplementing. Um, I did start taking iron pills um, because you can lose some of that with, with not eating the meat, but my body never like needed extra anything. Um, I did start taking like B12 and uh, iron though after that. Um, and then in terms of protein powder, I, I don't have one that I super love. I, I've tried 310 Nutrition, which I guess would probably be the best that I've had. And that is um, dairy free. Uh, so I, I normally go for that, like dairy free, kind of try and keep it as like vegan and, and, uh, as possible. Um, so 310 nutrition is probably the best one, but I don't normally like rebuy a lot. I try, I'm trying to still find one. How have your workouts been during this lockdown? Because I understand the gyms have been open and closed there off and on throughout this whole period. Yeah. I mean, they've been, they opened for like three weeks and then have been closed since then there's outdoor, uh, gyms, but I, I've been trying to, my best to do motivated home workouts, but it's really, really difficult. Um, and then my, actually I worked for a gym within that three weeks that they were uh, open. I started working for a gym that my roommate worked for and uh, we've been able to use their facilities uh, during this time. So that's really nice, but I kind of have to go whenever she goes. Um, it's not like a go whenever you can or whenever you want type of gym, but it's definitely helped because I'm really bad at being motivated with home workouts. Jefferson wants to know if you feel any strength loss now that you're a vegetarian. No, I actually have gotten a lot stronger uh, since becoming a vegetarian because I actually started to lift more and like learn how to um, new like 
give the nutrients to my body. Um, once you figure out like the protein that can work best uh, vegetarian wise, it it's easy to, to trade those out for uh, regular meat. Now I know it's legal in California. It's also <laughs> legal here in Canada. This person's asking your thoughts on the green medicine. Um, I personally don't uh, partake. Um, I have in the past, but it's just not for me, but uh, Hey, it helps a lot of people. I'm all for it. Legalize it. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know here. I am alpha. Your thoughts on the AEW's women's division. Yeah. Like I said earlier, um, I think there's a lot of talented women there. Um, I think they need a little bit more time. And, um, I do think dark's been giving a better platform to that. Um, but, I think there's so many talented women there that they just are underutilizing um, that I'm, I'm hoping that eventually they'll get their time to shine because they have some good girls there. Now, of course, there's now a connection with NWA where they had a couple NWA women's title matches on uh, AEW mm -hmm. and an AEW contracted wrestler is now the NWA women's champion. What do you think about that collaboration? See, I love, I love that kind of stuff. Like, I think that helps everybody involved. NWA gets a better platform. Um, they, then AEW can say they have the NWA title on it. Um, so I think that the talent share there is, it can only help everybody involved. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, but he's wondering Lego. if you like working yeah Fuego. Fuego del Sol yeah um I only had to work with him once um and it's probably one of my favorite matches I've ever had uh I would love to run it back and do another one um because I think we've both grown a lot since uh that first match so I I really had a good time working with him and he's a good dude War Eagle you've already she's already answered this but maybe <laughs> you could tell us what your last acting job was Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I've done I've done like a couple of things like as my pro wrestling character. Um, so I did, oh my gosh, what was it called? I can't even remember the name of it. It was a thing for True TV where me and uh, Laura uh, James, who was my uh, tag team partner with the Killer Bays, um, we m taught a guy how to wrestle and like all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty fun <laughs> doing that. Um, but otherwise, I really haven't done a lot of acting stuff um, full on for many years. Can't even remember what my last thing was. You've already said you like to go out to the clubs here and there, <laughs> but someone's asking what you like to do in your spare time. Um, during quarantine, I've really started getting back into video games. Um, I was really into them back when I was into wrestling uh, at the beginning, like when I first started watching wrestling. So I still have like a PS4 and everything. So I started getting back into that and I've been spending a lot of time doing that. Um, and a lot of time watching trashy reality TV, which is probably one of my favorite things to do. And there's a lot of it in the U S there's less of it in Canada, but uh, I was, I was in Texas last weekend and I noticed flipping through the channels. There's a lot of it. Yeah, it's like our number one import, I'm pretty sure at this point. I'm just glad that everyone has, if you haven't watched it on Netflix, watch Are You The One? Because it's top tier trash reality television. What's that one about? Um, so it's an MTV show. So that's all you need to know right off the bat. But um, it essentially puts 10 men and 10 women in a house where they've been put together by matchmakers and they have to figure out who their actual match is and then they win money uh, at the end if they get them all right. Interesting. It's fun. <laughs> now we do cover the UFO topic on this channel. Ace Goodhart wants to know your thoughts on UFOs. Uh, totally. I believe in, I believe in all that. I mean, we cannot possibly be the only beings in the entire universe. It's just wild to think that that's even that that would be possible. So, and didn't, haven't they come out recently with stuff? Uh, there's like been a lot it? recently. The, the governments, both the U.S. Navy and the Pentagon, have released three videos taken by military aircraft saying that these are unidentified flying objects. They don't know why they're here, what they want, if they're drones, if there's people or beings inside, where they're coming from, but they're in our airspace. And now there's a new video that like a fighter pilot or a new picture 
that a fighter pilot took of a UFO with his cell phone camera while he was in the cockpit that was released a couple weeks ago. So there's a lot of unusual stuff. Do you think they might be releasing this because something might be coming that they can't hide and they're starting to prepare us? I mean, so it's either that or they're just like, you know what, this year is a wash. Let's just throw it out there and like just pile it on top of everything. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, that's actually, it. maybe it is because there's something they're like, all right, well, people are going to find out now anyways. So we better get ahead of it. Now you kind of remind me of Teal Piper look wise, but different <laughs> hair. Have you worked with her at all? I haven't actually. I, I did meet her briefly um, when I went to watch the WoW tapings, but I haven't uh, had the chance to work with her. Were you ever uh, in talks with WoW at all? Yeah, there was a little bit. Um, when they first started, before they started doing the TV show again and they were running shows, um, they had reached out to me and uh, Laura to do some tag team stuff, but it just never worked out time-wise. Steve wants to know if you're a fan of Marilyn Monroe. What gave it away? The name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I I grew up loving uh, Marilyn Monroe, and I have her. I literally have her signature tattooed on my body. Um, but I think that she is a, a great example of kind of the the ideal of beauty. But then she had like such a deeper side that um, I don't think a lot of people knew about. Um, I have books and books uh, about that and just uh, who she actually was behind all of that. I see. As far as your tattoos, is there any you could show us or are they all in bad places? Uh, well, the, I have two on my ribs and then I have this one on my arm. That's uh, it's Irish Gaelic and it says family is forever. Um, and then I have, yeah, Iowa, the state of Iowa tattooed on one side, which uh, I got with my sorority sisters and then Marilyn Monroe's signature on the other side with some lips. Interesting. What's it like being a, in a sorority? I loved my experience in a sorority, uh, but also I don't think I had necessarily a typical sorority experience that like the stereotype of it because we were definitely the weird girls <laughs> in the sorority, but uh, they were my people. I still talk to them very often. And uh, I had that, my college experience would have been completely different without them. Shay Harrison wants to know if you've been to Marilyn Monroe's favorite spot, the Roosevelt in Hollywood that Marilyn supposedly haunts. <laughs> yeah, I have been there um, very briefly. I, there's a bar in there that I've gone to, um, but I haven't stayed there or anything. I see. And as far as United Wrestling Network, when it gets going again in 2021, is there someone you particularly want to have matches with there? What, what would be your goals in 2021 for UWN? Yeah, I would love to just see uh, a bigger presence from the women's division um, in general. I think that there's a lot of amazing women's wrestlers um, that we could get our hands on and um, that we have a good platform for them. So um, I would love to just see a, a bigger presence from that in general. Um, and uh, in terms of like people I want to work with, there's, there's a lot of girls that I would love to see out there, especially with these kind of partnerships with with NWA and stuff, I would love to, um, you know, see Serena Deeb out, he out here and hopefully uh, get the chance to work with her, like I said, um, and uh, Thunder Rosa again, um, as well as, you know, um, there's just some, some really good talent that we could bring in, I think. And getting towards the end here, could you tell us maybe your best experience with a fan as well as your worst over the years? Oh my gosh, I, oh, you know, I, um, there was this girl, uh, and her and her dad would come to every bar wrestling show or like a lot of the shows that I was on. Um, and they would always have signs for me and it was really, really uh, nice. And then she actually gave me, I found it the other day. She gave me a, like a friendship bracelet and I like my heart just melted. She gave me like a note and uh, a friendship bracelet, which, um, just made me feel really good. Cause obviously like as a female wrestler, I want to be able to be a role model for, uh, little girls because I think that that was my role models growing up you know and I think there's so many more girls watching wrestling now and I want them to like have the safe space and like feel like they're represented so that was really cool um 
And then in terms of a bad experience, I had a guy that just wouldn't stop emailing me. Um, he would just send me these long things and kind of treated me like he, you know, it was very stalkery. He, um, he would be like, you, you don't like me. And like, uh, you're not talking to me and like all this stuff. Like we were in some sort of relationship, but it was like paragraphs, paragraphs long. So that wasn't fun. And literally I would tell people who he was and make sure that he couldn't come near me at shows. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and now you hear Paige had a crazy stalker experience, which luckily her boyfriend was able to uh, subdue the guy before he caused any damage. And then there was that other one in Florida with, which I forget the name of the WWE wrestlers whose house he broke into. It was Sonia's. Yeah. Sonia Deville. Yeah. Does yeah. That, does that scare you hearing stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, Oh, th that just reminded me of another one too, because there was a guy that showed up to Santino's um, looking for me and he acted like he was going to sign up for training, acted really weird. Um, the trainers were like, um, this doesn't feel right. And then like made him leave. Uh, but he's like, Oh no, I'll just wait for her. And they're like, no, you're going to leave. Um, so after that, I definitely bought some pepper spray and carry that around with me now. All right, fans. So keep that in mind. If you're going <laughs> to harass her, <laughs> do not stalk wrestlers. This person's asking about Desi Dorada, who's a friend of his. How did you like working with her? I love working with Desi. It's been a while, but um, she's just such a sweet human being. And uh, we always uh, play off each other really well. So I enjoy working with her a lot. Yeah, I interviewed her last year. She seems to have a lot of potential. She does MMA too, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she does jujitsu um, a lot. Yeah. Ace wants to know if you have any good rib stories. No, I'm not into that kind of stuff, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm not into it either. I'd rather it, uh, it uh, stay out of wrestling because that causes problems. Totally. But, uh, the fans here are thanking you for uh, spending some time with all of us. I appreciate it. Do you want to remind people again where they can follow you and where they can buy your merchandise? Yeah, uh, Heather is me on Instagram and Twitter. And then um, my big cartel is just heathermonroe.bigcartel.com um, and uh, my Patreon. So you can subscribe. There's exclusive photo shoots and exclusive Instagram for that. Um, but yeah, follow me. And to close this up, I know you're a very good promo. Could you <laughs> give us a promo about UWN in 2021? What what the fans can expect? And I'm supposed I was supposed to be covering a UWN event in December, but unfortunately, everything got screwed up, and they only yeah. did taping. So I hope to run into you there uh, maybe next year. But to close this off, do you want to give us a a taste of your promo <laughs> Sure. Um, the United Wrestling Network has everything to offer you. I mean, it has me, the Killer Bay, Heather Monroe. The base there is, the base there was, the base there ever will be the goddess of girl power. And she is here. She is here to be the women's champion. Because as you know, the United Wrestling Network is going to have a new women's champion and it will be me and i can't wait for you all to watch me work